When I asked the Lord what to podcast this week, He said, My child, the people need to be comforted by the truth, not the rumors of war. Jesus certainly comforted us in Matthew 24, verse 6, when he said, You will hear of wars and reports of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for these things must happen, but it will not yet be the end. The Lord has spoken to me a lot about finding peace despite turmoil. Welcome to Truth of the Spirit. I'm Patty Bruner. This episode is Prophecy of Encouragement Despite Turmoil. As I identify words in this episode as from the Lord, I remind you that these words are in the category of personal, private revelation. And so I invite you to listen with a discerning heart and mind. These words have encouraged me And the Lord has instructed me to share His words for your encouragement. During prayer this week, the Lord told me, The message of fear not is the same now as it ever has been in times of great turmoil. You have heard reference to those waiting in the night before the parting of the Red Sea. Truly, they turn to me for their salvation. Soon and very soon, the obedience of the evil one shall be evident. As the frenzy dissolves and the dawn of day reveals the power of God. When the shield of deceit is lowered, Indeed, trampled under the heel of my beloved one, the blessed mother, my faithful daughter, my spouse. This Ark of the Covenant, the new Eve of mankind, shall crush the head of the serpent under her heel. As my servants speak of what is to unfold, you may listen, but the action to take is not in the streets or the ramparts, but in the churches, the pews, the floors, as you stand, kneel, and prostrate yourselves in prayer. In me you are free. Wars and rumors of wars are caused by the men who long to control others and then become controlled themselves as they join with the forces of evil to attain their goals. Pray, pray, pray. In this way, lives are changed. The prophet explained by the parable of the trees what can happen to those who desire an earthly kingship, not only for themselves, but also for their heirs, to leave their legacy upon the earth and to falsely live forever. Do you feel like you're between a rock and a hard place? Read Exodus chapter 14 and imagine yourself sitting at the edge of the Red Sea after you've found freedom from captivity in Egypt only to be chased by Pharaoh's army. What can you do but cry out to God? And in time, in in the morning perhaps, the Lord does the impossible. He divides the Red Sea, leads you to safety, and destroys your enemies even as they pursue you. The Lord has told me the following. Whenever the people call on His name, He listens. All across America, the people turn their face, their heart, their voice in one accord and hope in faith with the understanding that only their Creator can solve a time like this. As crisis intervention provides solutions, the people will again have to choose. Will you walk the narrow path? 
Will you place your actions where your petition flowed? God is a big God. God is also a just God. There will be no miracle cure, but he will provide a viable plan for those who will listen to his word. Listen, children, your nation and its economy shall be healed. When out of the depths you call to the Lord, he shall always reach down and draw you to himself. In his arms you shall find your peace that passes all understanding, all comprehension. For in his arms you shall enter the zone that goes beyond the torment of the accuser, the evil one. Let go of his torment, dear child. Know the Lord's love for you and rest deeply in his arms. If only for a while, and you shall be refreshed. The difference is life. The difference is grace. Entering in and resting within your heart instead of bouncing off the exterior, hardened by the lack of trust in God's goodness and mercy. God loves you. As you return to that truth, you will find all sorts of pathways cleared of the stumbling stones placed there by your enemies. As he cautions you to trust his word and avoid the occasion of sin, including the sin of self-pity, remember to advance the kingdom in all that you do. The Lord has said to me, as the saints in heaven now know, his path is strewn with obstacles, not to impose punishment, but to provide the opportunity for purification and cleansing from the effects of choices that separate man from God. As you mount the obstacles, the sense of relief and overcoming is short-lived. His reward is eternal. Fear not the momentary suffering. The purpose is God's to know. Accept the heart that beats as God's creation, His design. And love purely without trying to solve the mystery. The Lord is with you in the midst of turmoil as well in the midst of calm peace. His peace He gives you. There was a time of extreme turmoil in my family, and the Lord rescued me with peace through the chaplet of the St. Michael. I found it broadcast on EWTN. At the time, I didn't comprehend the prayers asking intercession from each of the choirs of angels. But when it got to the three Hail Marys, I shouted them into heaven, begging for peace. As I surrendered my family to God, the peace came. I had forgotten that Monsignor James Mancini, who was the bishop's delegated exorcist for the Diocese of Little Rock, had taught that a defense against spiritual warfare was prayer to St. Michael and guardian angels. The chaplet of St. Michael came from a private revelation to a Portuguese Carmelite nun and was approved by Pope Pius IX in 1851. In 1886, Pope Leo XIII instructed the Catholics of the world to pray the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel after each low mass. Pope Leo XIII wrote the St. Michael exorcism prayer for the priest, published in 1890. Pope Leo XIII is reported to have had a vision of a conversation between Jesus and Satan. He also wrote the Novena to the Holy Spirit. One time, the Lord told me, My child, as the heavenly chorus triumphs in the battles against evil that has penetrated the lives of your generation on the earth, know that soon... The triumph will be made evident. Evidences 
of the supreme power of God Almighty shall be shown to many. Those who see and believe, who accept the God of the nations of Israel, the God of Moses, the God of Peter and Paul, these shall know my peace in the midst of tribulation. These shall know my heart. In their own hearts, peace shall reign. As the plan of the kingdom unfolds, the race for wealth will become focused on the desire of the Lord for souls. It is the wealth of the attainment of souls that I desire, the Lord tell me. Wealth of assets, of money, stock holdings, land, etc., are only a means to pave smooth the road. He said, look at the road builders of the past. The roads of the Roman Empire still exist long after the demise of the Roman emperors. The roads blazoned by the saints, martyrs, and other evangelists have allowed thousands of thousands to follow the way first marked by Jesus. So too, dear child, remember that I have called you in this generation to speak out to those in need of truth. Another time the Lord said, My child, as you have seen, I delight in helping my children as they seek my face, my help. As I forgive them, they begin to comprehend my love. There's always an opening for them if they look for it. It's not hidden, but they must seek to find it. I have never forgotten my people, and I never will. I forget their sins. I forget their words. But I never forget their tears, nor their hearts. They are mine forever. Continue to help my people let go of the harm from the past. Continue to bring my healing to them. In the sea of my mercy, there is much healing to be had, yet no one enters it. Come, my children, bathe clean in my mercy. I shall wipe away your tears, your sin, your broken dreams. I shall give you freedom from the sin of slavery. I shall give you hope for tomorrow. I shall give you rest from your enemies. Seek me, children. I wait for you. Some time ago, the Lord gave me a word about America that continues to be true. He said, My children, as the country is led blindly by ambition, greed, and ideals that are not rooted in wisdom, know that the Lord of all has America in my hand. I have brought up your country as a witness to all that the separation of church and state proved that leaders of government do not lead the church, and that while leaders of the church influence the state, they are not to focus on the material administration, including wars, but are to stay focused on the spiritual needs of the people. Oppression by government is a result of spiritual leaders not doing the job they are chartered to do. Let me repeat that. Oppression by government is a result of spiritual leaders not doing the job they are chartered to do. Then the Lord said, When will society turn towards the Lord? When the Lord is clearly the answer. The human nature of mankind looks inward, for solutions, and thus is doomed to fail. Only when guided by the Holy Spirit can the tremendous potential of a country be found. The Lord said, I love America. I love the people in charge and the people digging the ditches. 
Turn to me, dearest people, and your abundant blessings will again manifest. As you look at this current administration, look for the good. Ignore the bad. Pray for the better. Only in the faithfulness to God can happiness be found and perfection be expanded on earth. Pray for your bishop, your pope, your pastor, these men share a difficult burden, the protection of the church during the turbulent times of agnosticism. Complacent Christians are influenced each day to the darkness of deceit and are swayed by popular opinion. A few days after that, he shared a prayer for us to pray during the National Day of Prayer. And like all truth, it remains true. I want to share it with you now as we close. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the system of government that you have given us, one that leads only through election by the people. We ask your mercy and grace to penetrate the hearts of each government leader and those who follow their lead. May each person entrusted with the care of our country know you, O Lord. May they thirst for righteousness. May they desire wisdom. We ask your protection for each person of our military, especially those who are placed in harm's way as they protect our freedom and the freedom of mankind, a freedom based on community rights. We pray for peace so that each weapon of war could be beat into plowshares. Until that time, Dear Lord, may the intensity of combat awaken the faith held in each heart that you, Father, truly exist and love us dearly. We pray for the government leaders that direct the military. May they always direct with compassion, integrity, and courage. May they defend the principles of our Constitution that we are one nation under God. In times of testing, Lord, strengthen us to stay true to the course of your divine will. Watch over us and guide us. Connect our hearts to know truth by your grace. Comfort each soldier who is away from loved ones. May your peace comfort them and their families, the peace that goes beyond all understanding the peace that calms our hearts when all around us there is turmoil. In Christ's name, we ask these things. Amen. You've been listening to Truth of the Spirit and Prophecy of Encouragement Despite Turmoil. I'm Patty Bruner. We invite you to subscribe and to check out our other episodes on our YouTube channel and then come back for more with the Holy Spirit there's always more Amen This is the Padua Podcast Network. Padua Podcast Network.com.